Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Myths and Mothers. So this is a short story collection by Fly on the Wall Poetry Press. Uh, it contains five stories. It's got May We Know Them by Gaynor Jones, How to Dress a Rabbit by Clayton Lister, Memory Chip by Helen Nathaniel Fulton, The Last of the Nest Gatherers by Sasha Akhtar, and Pass Through the Waters by Kenzie Miller. Uh, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Folklore and futurism, these stories question everything. From the remote hillsides of Settle to the dark caves of Pabalon, from the hospitals of Berlin to an unrecognisable earth, of myths and mothers will make you believe in legends and question conventions. Follow hairpin turns into the remote hillsides of North Yorkshire, where two boys take a holiday with their rabbit-skinning granny. Disappear into dark caves on Philippine islands and scale sheer limestone cliffs with men who search for the world's most expensive animal product, prize nests woven from a mysterious bird saliva. Feel sand under your feet in the depths of night as you search for love beyond limits. You will long to hold a child, even when that instinct has been erased from your body and mind. Now it didn't make me long to hold a child. Um, but yeah, there is very much like a motherhood theme throughout this, and weirdly an animal products theme as well, um, which is, was weird reading as a vegan. So I'm going to go straight in and read you some notes from May We Know Them by Gaynor Jones. And um, this involves people getting an, in and this has got people getting an injection. Um, I'm not going to say why, because that kind of ruins the story. But um, yeah, I, I thought this was interesting because I picked this up just after um, going to um, have a blood sample taken, so I could kind of relate to it. Her mother looked over at the thick pad of cotton Juliana held to her upper arm and said, They might as well have robots doing it. Juliana shrugged, then winced. Maybe they will. But her mother was wrong. Yes, it had been quick, and yes, Juliana had been one of many young girls lined up, and yes, it had been efficient. But the woman herself had been kind, attentive. She'd smiled at Juliana, showed her where the apple juice and plain biscuits were for after, lifted her gently by the elbow as she moved her from the chair to the cubicle. Juliana could still feel the place under the injection site where the woman's fingers had pressed softly against her flesh. She smoothed her fingers over it and felt her breath quicken at the memory. Juliana's mother fussed with her papers on her lap, then looked up at the sky, a stark white matted with thick clouds that threatened another flood, the third in as many weeks. Juliana moved closer to her mother on the bench, who in turn pressed her body back. Juliana pulled the pad away from her arm altogether and held it in her lap. Just a pinprick of colour, a much brighter red than the dull streak she had seen on the paper after wiping herself that morning. The arm wasn't sore, not exactly. It was more of a throbbing sensation, akin to a pulse. I just thought that was really well written. So we've got How to Dress a Rabbit by Clayton Lister. And um, Granny Wallop is a character in this and she's just got some... Uh, so she speaks in like northern dialect and I just, I love it when that's well done. So she goes, Eee, that'd not be so swamish with that Granny Wallop there in thee. That was my northern accent. Um, also though, there is a lot of literally dressing of rabbits in this, which is pretty bleak if you're vegan, team vegan. And then we have Memory Chip by Helen Nathaniel Fulton, which is probably my favourite of the uh, whole lot of these stories. So, um, and here we go, this, is, this shows you why. It was my choice. I came to West Germany in 1978, more than a year ago, to make a life in Europe's split state. But the longer I stay, the more disjointed I feel. Uh, even my name is different here. I'm no longer Helen, but Helena, pronounced Helena. I'm in the more desired, richer, capitalist half, but I'm always waiting in grim places and doing grim things. Um, and I'm learning German, so that was why that interested me. And there's even an odd sprinkling of German words like Ausweis for passport, so. So the line in this, it says, uh, they say work makes you free. I wondered what it would do for me. You know where they famously said work makes you free? Over the gates of Auschwitz. Arbeit macht frei. Um, and she describes the smell of Germany. Potatoes, cabbage and vinegar, roast sausage and curry powder. It's making me want to make my own vegan curry verse. Maybe I'll do that this evening. And so here we learn a little bit about this woman's relationship. So she says, I've never minded early rises. It's simply a part of life's rhythms. Going to school, early lectures, rising for work. Because I accept this and am usually cheerful enough in the mornings, I tend to irritate my partner Mika, who's always grumpy until about 11 o'clock if he has to rise early. He wakes up as the day goes on, picking up a frenetic momentum and consuming various illicit substances we can't afford. He is developing a particular liking for pure hash and cocaine, far removed from occasional grass joints made to focus in on his music. He's done that ever since I've known him. But he shrugs off my worries, lives for the now, tells me to relax. More often now he listens. Then he listens to music, plays guitar and or parties like a dervish until 3 or 4 a.m. This doesn't make for harmonious relations. Girl, you should leave that guy. Fuck him. And she laughs at, um, she's at a hospital and she gets introduced to Frau Dr. Claudia Dick Bertel Bop. 
What a totally ridiculous name. Just a just a German name. All right, on to the last of the nest gatherers by Sasha Akhtar. Um, this is about um, gathering nests for bird's nest soup. Um, bird's nests for bird's nest soup. I, be I believe they're the most expensive culinary ingredient in the world. They're also obviously not vegan. And in this, uh, she references a little track from uh, Sir David Attenborough, quoted in journal Facts and Details Southeast Asia on the Swiftlet, Jeffrey Hayes, 2008. Uh, David Attenborough is one of the authors. I eventually want to get through everything that he's ever written. So then we move on to Pass Through the Waters by Kenzie Millar. And this has Selkies in it. And um, they say we're all sisters under the sea. There are no men. Selena shrugged. There are some males. They are sisters too. We are all Selkie. For humans, everything is different if you are born a man or a woman. It is men who get to travel the world, while we women are left at home. Strange. Selena looked out at the star dip night. We do not really think of this thing you call a home. In the sea, change is eternal. But yes, some interesting bits there on the differences between men and women in society. And so the Selkie gives uh, the character, what's her name, Cass. Um, she gives her, her, what is it, her, her skin, that's it. So she says, this is not something you have asked of me, but something I wish to give you. Without my skin, I cannot return to my home or my sisters. I know that when the time comes, you will give me the skin and let me go. For that is what love is, is it not? The choice to remain together, which I like that. Uh, and then we get, Cass, can I kiss you? Yes, please. And that doesn't happen often enough in books or movies. People just kiss each other. And it's like, what about consent, mate? What about consent? And I have been told this by people, right? <laughs> this is me getting off on my rant. So a bit, if you go out on a first date or whatever, or second date, third date, whatever, whatever um, and you want to kiss them, like, I would always ask, like, can I kiss you? And then, like, I've had people say, like, oh, you've just, like, ruined the moment. It's like, what, by making sure that you consent? I don't know. I'm still going to keep asking people because what if they say no? I'd rather, I'd rather have an oral contract, mate. Anyway, of Myths and Mothers short stories edited by Fly on the Wall Poetry Press. Pretty solid four out of five. They do some really good short story collections and this one is no exception. I would recommend checking it out, especially if you like historical fiction because there are quite a few historical pieces in this. I mean... As I say, I really like the one that was set in West Germany. I thought that was very cool. But the whole lot, really good stuff. Um, would recommend. Check it out. So there we have it. That's what I made of Myths and Mothers by Fly on the Wall Poetry Press. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.